Let me just sort of set the stage in terms of what I'd love to do. I will have the chat up. So if you have questions, I will keep you muted. But if you do have questions, feel free to post the questions in the chat. Periodically, I will stop and just sort of pause and then take a look at any questions to make sure. So this is intended to be interactive. I will ask questions, ask for feedback, ask where you are. So I know, you know, making sure that the content is applicable um, and, you know, if it is, we'll continue. And if it's not, then I'll make sure that we'll uh, add it, uh, add the appropriate content as we need to. All right. So again, welcome. Glad you guys are here. So today what we're going to be talking about is how to launch your travel business to a raving community without an existing list or friends and family. Many of you guys are in different spaces of your travel business. Maybe you launched you started your business in 2019, and then in 20, uh, 2020, you were slapped in the face with COVID like many of us. Many of you started your business in 2020 and didn't have a real chance to launch your business. Many of you may be on the phone right now, and you just started your business, and you're about to launch. So I know that people are in a variety of different stages of their launch. Maybe you launched many years ago. You didn't see the traction that you want, you wanted, or maybe you did. Wherever you are, what we're really going to be talking about today is how to launch or relaunch your travel business to a raving community of people that know, like, and trust you without already having an existing list. So if you don't have a list, you're starting over, maybe you have a small list, or you just have friends and family and you really want to get outside of that, this, is, this topic for you is for you tonight. So what I want you to do is I want to think about your situation and I want you to reply in the comments and let me know yes in the chat if any of these things sound familiar to you. Maybe you are ready to launch your business and you have already launched your new business and when you did, nothing happened. You didn't get any bookings, no, no requests for bookings. You didn't get nothing. I mean, I don't know how to say nothing more than nothing, right? Nothing happened when you launched your business. Maybe you launched your business and you got a lot of inquiries, but you didn't get any sales. Maybe, like I said, you launched in 2019. Maybe you launched even recently and you've gotten a lot of people to ask you for quotes. You've spent a lot of time providing quotes and you've not made any sales. If that sounds like you, I'd like you to type yes in the comments in the chat. What if you are ready to launch or you think you're ready to launch but you don't know what to do or say to announce your new business. You're kind of stuck on what words should you be using? What should you tell them about you, your business? You know, maybe you're just kind of stuck and you don't know what to say or do about your launch. Maybe you know that social media is your thing because people keep telling you that you should launch on social media and you don't know what to say or do. Or, Worst case, you're afraid of social media, and the whole thought of that makes you a little sick in the stomach, right? Because that certainly was me many years ago when I started in the online space. I was every, the thought of showing up and doing what I'm doing today gave me knots in my stomach, and I uh, got a little sick every time I had to do something like this, um, and it was very scary to me. So if any of that sounds like you, let me know in the comments. All right, I've got several people who are afraid of social media, people who are ready to launch, but they don't know what to do, uh, not quite ready. You know, and one other thing I didn't um, put here that I think is even um, applicable is maybe you don't even know what the hell it means to launch. Like you just have like no cool clue what being ready to launch means. What, what, it, what does a launch include? Everybody keeps talking about this word, but what is it and why do I even care? Why can't I just start selling travel, right? Somebody's told you about the opportunity and you don't understand what all this hoopla about launching is. You're in the dark about that as well. If that sounds like you, let me know in the comments too. Because it sounds like based on the comments and the chat, a lot of you are in the right space tonight because you're here. So what if you could just put aside your fears for a minute? And that's what I want you to do in the next 60 to, it's going to take us about 90 minutes to get through this content. So stick with me. But what I want you to do during this is I want you to imagine what it would look like if you actually understood what your offers were, you understood what you needed to do, 
you understood what your product, somebody just uh, did a line. I don't know who that was. Uh, uh, but you did it. You know, you had multiple offers to launch, right? In the form of products and services. And you're thinking, but I still travel. What do you mean products and services? So we're going to talk about what that looks like. But what if you knew what that meant and you actually had it for your travel business? What if you could actually get qualified leads on autopilot? Would that make you feel better about your business, about what you're doing? What if you, you launched to your own community of people? So instead of joining other people's Facebook groups or looking for where you think your client is, you had your own community of people for which you to show up in and sell your products and services to. How would that make you feel? Let me know in the comments. What if attracting, relating, and converting people into your travel business was effortless? Right. So what I mean by that is, is you actually didn't have to rely on friends and family. Friends and family were icing to your cake, so to speak. And you were able to effortlessly attract the type of client that you want to work with. Somebody writes that they would love that. Right. And so that's what we're going to talk about today is how we can make that happen in your travel business. But before we get started, I'd like to introduce myself. Many of your names are new to me, um, so that must mean that I am new to you. My name is Sunday Gardner. I am the online travel boss. I am a business coach and trainer specializing in travel in the travel business. So I'm not a generic business coach. I help people who are passionate about travel, launch, operate, and grow successful, profitable travel businesses. I have over 20 years' experience in launching businesses, both small businesses and also in corporate America. I have a background in sales and marketing, specifically a background in project management. I am a certified project manager. Um, I do all things launching and operations. So I am a business process expert, and then I'm also the person that ignites you to get it done. So what I want you to do is I want you to make a commitment to me and to yourself in the next 60 to 90 minutes. You know, get, get rid of all distractions. If you've got the television on, you've got your phone on, get a piece of paper and a pen. Because I promise you, if you stick with me through the 90 minutes, you are going to get some value out of the content that we are going to share today. Okay? So I'm going to talk to you about how we can get your business, no matter what stage you're in, into an area of ease when it comes to presenting your offers and selling your offers to the right client at the right time. All right. Does that excite you? Are you guys up for that tonight? Let me know. So, you know, some people responded in our, in my question just at the top, you know, I don't even know why I really even need to do a launch. What the heck is this launch word, right? It's just another fancy word for me to do work. That's not going to get me anything. But let's really talk about why you really need to officially launch, right? You know, I always say when I first started my business, you know, I erroneously thought probably the same thing that many of you all think, which was, you know, I'm going to build this amazing business. And magically, people are going to find me and they're going to come. They're going to come to my business because, damn it, I am awesome. <laughs> and not only am I awesome, people are going to know that I'm awesome and they're going to come because I'm going to give them amazing service. I'm going to be an amazing service provider. You know, I'm passionate about what I do and that people are going to come. And the reality is that that is the furthest thing from the truth. Because you build it and because you are passionate does not mean that people will show up at your doorstep. Right. So the reason to do a launch is that first ignition of letting the world know that you're there. So you can't just build it and just sit back and do nothing. You have to create the traffic and the visibility for yourself so that people know that you exist. Businesses fail not because their business idea is poor. So in your case, it's not going to be your your business isn't going to fail because you can't sell like you 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 don't know what you're doing. You know you've got a bad idea. Travel doesn't sell. You know nobody's using travel agents. That's not the reason why your business is going to fail. If your business does fail, most likely it's going to fail because you are obscure. Nobody knows you, and nobody's buying from you. 
So the first thing that we want to do when we start a business is we want to create an event and activity around that business so that people start to understand who you are, fall in love with you, and become it becomes a no-brainer to buy from you. And so the very thing that I just mentioned is, is that you want to have an event around the fact that you launched, right? You are going to be a specialist and fill in the blank, whatever it is that you want to do in the travel industry, right? Oftentimes when people launch their travel business, they haven't identified a specialty. They haven't created an event for which people can rally around and be excited with them around it, or their event is too short. There's no communication, nobody knows, and then you just start off on the wrong foot and you just keep going on. But the real additional reason besides having an event just for the sake of having an event is to build awareness, right? Is to provide information to your ideal client that you are the bomb.com and you're the go-to person for whatever it is that you will specialize in. What I'd like to know now are what are some of the specialties that you guys have in the travel business, or if you thought of one, where do you, where would you like to specialize? And let me give you some examples of specialties. Somebody who, who decides to uh, specialize in wedding destinations, that's an easy one. It's my go-to one. Some of my clients, I have one client who specializes in couples, um, African-American couples who want to reignite their relationship or keep the flame going in their relationship, and they do that through travel. So she specializes in couple retreats. I have another client who specializes in, uh, which I love this, she specializes in adventure travel with your pet. So she does, she has an entire specialty around how do you travel with your pets, right? So you see how specific those niches are? What I want to understand is what kind of niche do you guys have, the people who are in the, um, in the audience tonight? So we've got some family, group trips, that's great. Let me know as we continue through what your niche is, and then I will use your niche as examples throughout the course of this webinar. What I will tell you, though, unless you are launching to a bunch of people that already know, like, and trust you, your objective in your launch is not to make sales. Erroneously, you may think, I want to make sales. I, obviously, you know, we all want to make money in our business. And you may think, oh, I'm going to launch so I can have, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars in sales um, when I launch. And the reality is if you are new to this game, you're new to this business and no one knows you, they don't know you, they don't like you, nor do they trust you. Your objective is not sales, but truthfully, your objective is to get leads. You want to start to build relationships with as many new people that meet your criteria as possible. So I've got somebody who's in the LGBTQ accessibility space. That's a perfect niche, right? So you, when you do your launch, you want to attract people who are in that community, right? LGBTQ plus community, right? Who have accessible needs, right? That would be another thing. So be specific in understanding who you want to attract and make sure that you're really clear about what the goals of your launch are. All right, so when I first started, not only my travel business, but my first business, I launched the hard way. And many of you who have already launched probably can relate to this. But, you know, I took hundreds of unnecessary supplier training. I was recruited by a host agency. They recruited me, and I jumped in, and I was like, I drank the Kool-Aid that they gave me, even though I knew better I drunk, well, I didn't know better because I, I didn't have the experience in the travel industry. So I was like, okay, I'm going to absorb as much information. I don't know how to market a business. I know how to sell in a business, but I don't know the travel industry. So I'm going to, I'm going to take as much as I can from my mentor and I'm going to do what they say. And what they said was go take some supplier training. So I got certified in Marriott. I got certified in, I don't know, three different cruise lines. I got, you know, I started to get certified in some cities. I was going to be a Fort Lauderdale specialist, a Jamaica specialist. I had like a room full of travel supplier certificates on my wall. And I was excited, right? I took, I took AMR's training. And if you've ever taken AMR, 
it's like really intensive, right? I mean, they, they got about a million properties and, you know, you got to learn all that. If you're taking any cruise training, it was the same thing, right? So I took a lot of unnecessary supplier training and I thought that was going to help me sell travel better. And then I was relentless on social media. Like I am now consider myself to be the social media queen um, in the Facebook space. I'm not a social media queen across all the platforms, but now I consider myself to be a pretty big expert in Facebook. And even back then, I thought I was pretty much of an expert. So I thought what I needed to do was to post on social media. Now, I actually have the, a superpower. I know how to run Facebook ads. So I was like, I'm going to post on Facebook. I'm going to do what I need to do on the back end of Facebook. And that is going to get me sales. It's going to get me people to sell travel to. And then... And then what I did is I started doing quotes, right? So I got people interested because I'm super good at finding people and getting people who are interested in me, right? Because I know how to sell. I know how to market, right? So then I was getting a bunch of people who were asking for quotes. I mean, lots of quotes, right? Even my friends and family, they got wind of it, right? So I'm on my thing. I, I go on my page and I, I tell people I'm a travel agent and what happened, right? Every Tom, Dick, and Harry comes out of the woodwork. Oh, Sunday, you know how to do this. Can I get a quote on this? I remember one of my girlfriends, she sent me a text and she was like, I mean, she literally sent me her itinerary. She's like, give it, give me this quote. And you know, I was desperate because I, I didn't know what I was doing in the childhood. So I was like, you know, what? I'm going to do that. I'm going to give it. So I did it. I did it. Gave all these quotes and nobody was booking. Right. But, you know, I really wasn't trying to sell. I really was trying to learn how to do the business so I could learn how to go on trips for my family. Like my secret desire was to take my family of five on the cheapest, freest trip I could absolutely do. But I swear I could not figure it out. Right. And so I didn't necessarily harass my friends and family, but I know many of you guys are. <laughs> right. So that's the hard way. Right. That's the gruesome way to launch your travel business. And it's not going to get you sales. Now, there's some of you who've got great friends and family and you will get some sales out of that. Some of you will post relentlessly on social media and you will stalk people relentlessly and you will get some sales. So I'm not going to tell you 100 percent of the time that the, this hard way isn't going to work for you. It will. But it's hard way. I don't want to do it the hard way. So I had to stop and I had to regroup and I had to stop listening to what everyone was telling me. And I had to go back to what I knew was the right way to market a business. And that's what I'm going to go over with you tonight. So what I want, and like I just mentioned, I want to show you what the easy way is that doesn't require you to ever waste your time. Because you know what? I know many of you guys are also full-time employees for someone else, right? Unfortunately, we're all not independently wealthy. We work for someone else. And building this business requires you to have a silent investor in most cases, which either may be a spouse or another job while you're building this out. So we don't have time to waste, right? You know, when I started my travel business, I was doing general coaching for uh, entrepreneurs and I was building that practice, right? So I was like, I, and I didn't really want to sell it. I just wanted to get out of town with my family and I didn't want to waste time. Many of you want to make sales and you don't want to waste time, right? You want to make sales as quickly as possible, get in front of the ideal client that you want, and you don't want to waste time. Literally, who's got time to be posting, quoting, and not making money? None of us do, right? So, you know, I've helped several people subsequently from me not, you know, taking a, a break and looking at really what should be the process for launching a travel business the right way, right? Unfortunately, I'm going to say this, and I don't mean this to be negative towards any host agency, but bunk what the normal people are telling you to do. How do I get this process in a succinct way that will not only allow me to effectively book travel, but also allow people that I work with. And that's where I was in 2018. I said, you know what? There are hundreds, thousands of people who are recruited just like me who don't know what the hell they're doing to operate a travel business, let alone launch one, and then successfully get clients consistently, right? 
So what I did was I created a program, and we're going to talk about the steps associated with getting rid of all that overwhelm, wasting time on social media that's not going to effectively get you sales, wasting time with quotes that's not going to get you anything, wasting time on launching in an ineffective process. All right, so what I will tell you, though, is even though I've worked with clients, particularly since 2018, and my focus is on helping those that are passionate, it's not typical, right? The results are not typical, and what do I mean by that is I can tell you what to do, but if you don't do it, it's not going to work. It's <laughs> simple. You think that that would be obvious, but sometimes you have to say the obvious so that people get it, and the reality is is that if you signed up to become a travel professional so you can make hundreds of thousands of dollars, go on free trips, and that you believe the hype that travel is going to sell itself. This is not the right webinar for you. I'm not the right coach for you. And really what you want to do is just jump off. And I'm not going to be hurt, right? I'm not going to be hurt. If half of you are like, bunk this, I'm not really wanting this work. I don't want this. I want to make some quick cash. Because I will tell you in a heartbeat, it's quicker to go get a job and work for somebody else as a second job than it is to build a business, right? It takes time, money, sweat, and tears. I've cried more times than I have laughed when I first started my business because I didn't have a coach. Then it was, you know, if I wasn't a strong person, I would have said, forget this and quit. And I know many of you may be in that same position. So let's get to it. All right, here are the three major secrets that I want to share with you all today, right, relative to launching, is that you do not need uh, let me rephrase that. You actually do need a reason for people to work with you, right? And you may say, well, I still travel and that's the reason. That's not enough reason, right? You need an offer that is going to compel people to, particularly people that know, like, and trust you to buy from you and those people that are strangers to opt into getting to know you. Secret number two is that you need to generate excitement around your offers. You can't just create it and sit back and do nothing, right? So we're going to talk about what that looks like and what that means. And secret number three is whatever you think you need to do in promotion 10x that, right? Whatever you think that you a promotion looks like in your mind, and if you've never done it, I want you to 10x the thought of what that looks like. And we're going to talk about some of those things in tonight's training. All right, are you guys are you guys hot? A hit? All right, so what are your goals, right? We talked a little bit about that in the beginning. We talked about like why do you even need to do a launch, right? But you know, the question that I would have for you is who are you launching to and what is it that you want from the launch, right? So so before I jump into that, that's what I want to just make sure that I'm clear. I just I closed the chat. I'm gonna actually pause take a drink of water, and then ask if there's any questions, right? Or ask you, what do you guys want from your launch, right? Do you want sales? Do you want leads? Do you want to just get to know people? Do you just want to get to know the process? What do you want from a launch when you get ready to launch your travel business? Some of you guys told me that you're already ready to launch. What is it that you want to get out of it, right? So someone's writing, I want sales, okay? So Kanisha, you know, the this is the elephant in the room, right? Everyone wants sales. And my question is, is are you launching to a group of people that already know, like, and trust you? If the answer to, to that question is yes, then sales is a good goal for you to go after. And we'll talk about how you can do that if you're launching to someone that you, to a group of people that already know you, are familiar with your ability to book great trips for them, then yes, you can get sales. But if you are on the flip side of that, anyone in, in, on this call, you're on the flip side of that, and you don't have anyone who knows that you can book awesome trips, right? You want leads. You want relationships. That's what you really want. So for those who are writing relationships and they want leads, you don't know anybody who really wants to book. I mean, you maybe have a few friends, but the reality is your few friends aren't going to allow you to quit your job, right? So we need more than a few friends, right? You need steady number of people who are consistently looking for you to book travel with, right? So for those who wrote, I want leads and relationships, ding, ding, you win the prize because that should be your goal 
when you launch your travel business is to build as many relationships as you possibly can, get in front of as many people that fit your ideal client as you can. Let me say that again because someone missed that. You want to not get in front of as many people as you can. You want to get in front of as many people that you want to work with. So whoever you want to work with, that's who you want to get in front of and start building relationships with. Okay? All right. So let's go and let's jump into secret number one. Right? So secret number one is always about your client. What's in it for them What are you offering and to whom are you offering it to? So what does that mean? So the first question I asked you guys earlier was, what do you specialize in? What's your, what's your stick, right? What's the thing that you are going to become the expert in, right? So some people said group, family trips, right? Some people, let me go back to the comments and look at what some of you guys said, your, uh, some people said all inclusive. Some people said, uh, I'm looking looking back. I see some all inclusive, you know, and unfortunately, all inclusive is not really a niche. Some people said girl trips, that's great. Romance, that's another good one, right? Right. So the first thing that you want to do when you dive into this before you even think about launching is what is it that you want to be known for that you specialize in? What problem for a community of people will you be solving? Let's use girls trip as an example, right? If I specialize in girl trips, right, is it going to be single girl trips, married girl trips, right? What kind of girl trips? That's be the first thing I would ask a person if they told me they were specializing in girl trips. What kind of girls are we going to be working with, right? So we go right to the second bullet is who is our audience, right? Is it, you know, people who just graduated college? Is it people who are already in college? Is it professional girls? Is it married girls, right? Because all of those girls, even though they're girls, they have different types of experiences that they would want to have right? And someone is probably thinking, well, I want to specialize in all of them. Yeah, that's great. But the reality is, I want to tell you just on Facebook alone, every month there's 2 billion people on the platform. You cannot market to all of those with the finite budget that you have. I don't know. I don't even know what your budget is, but it's too finite to market to all of those, right? So you've got to get as narrow and as specific as you possibly can when it comes to identifying who you want to work with and the problem and the want that they need. Right, uh, not the ones that they need. I mean, the when you want to work with them in terms of understanding what they want or what they need. Hopefully, that makes sense. Let me say that again. Right. So, if I'm working with girl trips, I, you know, my specialty will be girl trips. I want to know what type of girls, right? Right. What type of women will I be working with? Married women who want to get away from their family, right, is different than a woman potentially who, you know, she may only get to get away once a year versus a girl who's single, right, and they're going out to party, right, and get away from work, right? You know, those different those needs may be different. They may be the same, but you need to at least identify it and understand who you're working with and understand what they need and what they want out of your services as a travel professional, all right? And then the thing that you want to really understand is many of you guys, when I say where are they in the relationship, And KLT stands for no like and trust, right? And there are three areas that people are in relative to your business. They are either strangers to your business. They don't know anything about you. They've never heard of you. They could, they don't know anything about you, right? They may be, uh, the second area is acquaintances that they may be familiar with you. Maybe someone referred them to you. You know, maybe you did a trip with someone and you are a referral, they're acquaintances. So they're familiar with your services and they're interested because they trust their friend that they'll use you. So that relationship and that KLT is a little bit stronger with acquaintances. And then you've got BFS, right? I like to equate them to relationship because this is exactly what you have. Your clients are in some phase of a relationship with you. They don't know you, they're getting to know you, or they love you and they're BFFs. Obviously, we want to work with BFFs all the time, right? But oftentimes, you have to start with strangers and move them down that cycle. And so it's important for you to know where 
and who you're working with in this relationship cycle, because what you offer depends on where they are. Meaning you don't ever sell to a stranger. Let me say that again. You should never try and sell a multiple thousand dollar package to someone who you just met. They don't know what your, how you work. They don't know your expertise. They don't trust you. And it's not likely that they're going to buy from you. So if you start trying to sell, you know, your trip to Aruba, you know, your group trip to Aruba to a bunch of strangers who have never heard of you without some introduction, it's too premature. And unfortunately, many of you, that's what you do. You start offering packages to strangers and you're like, why aren't people buying? right? Because they know Expedia.com better than they know you. They know Priceline because everybody knows William Shatner, right? If you're as old as I am, you know him from Star Trek, right? So, or is it, is it Star Trek? Yes, yeah, Star Trek, right? So, you know, they've got these famous people who are their spokeswomen, uh, spokespeople that they are more familiar with them than they are with you. So they're more likely to go on Priceline.com than they are with you because they don't know you. Right. So you only want to sell to people that you know, that know, like, and trust you and you have a relationship with. So for those of you who said, I want to build a relationship with people, ding, 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 that's what you want to do. Your most valuable asset that you will have in your business is the number of people that know, like, and trust you. The larger you can make that pool, the easier it will be for you to sell. All right. Any questions on that before we move on? All right, so when I say what's in it for them, we just went over these types of relationships and what stages that they are in. Let me just go a little bit more in terms of what you should be doing for the other stages. You should be selling to your BFF. So people that know, love, and tr like you, they, they know, like, and trust you, they know your services, they have bought from you in the past, or, you know, maybe they just are your BFFs, whatever that may be, you can sell to them, right? You get put together a package, put together a group, sell to your BFFs all day long, right? Acquaintances, not so much. Strangers, don't do it, right? Now, if you've got some unlimited amount of budget, maybe your aunt lets you a million dollars and you've got a, you know, a bottomless pit of marketing dollars, then I say go and sell for strangers. But if you are on a finite budget, you've got finite time and money, do not try and sell to strangers. What you want to do with strangers is introduce yourself. You want to introduce yourself and you want to create an offer that is a no-brainer light offer, right? You want it to be equivalent to a cup of coffee. You want to say, hey, you know, this is Sunday Gardner. I'd like you to get to know me. And here is my fill-in-the-blank little mini offer that's going to allow you to get to know me and allow you to understand that I'm the bomb.com, right? And that could be in the form of a PDF a tip sheet, a guide. It could be in the form of a training webinar like this, right? You know, you want to do things that require more people's time or money the, long, the further along the relationship cycle you are, right? So acquaintances are more likely to give you time, right? More likely to give you money, smaller investment dollars, right? Sit down with you and actually do a discovery call with you to talk about your services, right? Than a stranger is. So Again, you want to have the right type of offer based on where they are in the relationship. Everybody you meet from now on, when it comes to a prospective client, you want to answer what is in it for them because that's what they're thinking, right? Your job is to answer that for them and to be able to speak to that for them. Don't ever let your prospective clients try and figure out what your value proposition is for them. Tell them what it is, right? So for strangers, you want to, particularly that person who's doing girl trips, right? Right? What is, what are your girl trips? What 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 do they need? What do they want to know, right? They want to, you know, if it's a single set of girls that you're going to be working, you're going to be working with single girls. They may want to know what the hottest spot the spots are to have the best time, right? Maybe to meet other single guys, right? Or to party or whatever they do. Relax. Spa, whatever their thing is, their thing that is probably on the top of their mind is where are the hottest spots for 2021 as the world opens um, post-COVID, right? Right. A married, you know, someone who's trying to get away from, you know, her kids from virtually schooling and being a, a, a virtual principal for the last nine months may just want to just decompress with her girlfriends and not talk kids 
spouses, cleaning the house, cleaning, you know, cooking dinner and just wants to be catered to, right? So her offer may be a different type of offer. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys. All right. Any questions there? All right. So next thing. So secret number two. So secret number one is really answering what kind of offer are you going to make for your type of client based where they are? What kind of stranger offer will you have, which is an introduction to where you are? How will you nurture them in the acquaintance fade? And what kind of offer will you offer people who already know, like, and trust you? All right. Secret number two is generating excitement. Like you have this launch, you now know what your offers are. So let's say we're going to be doing a launch around trying to get as many strangers that fit our ideal client, right? So secret number two is we want to generate some excitement. I want, I want to get, so I'm going to use the girls trip as an example. I want to get in my hemisphere, stratosphere, in my sphere of influence, I want to get as many single girls as I possibly can in a group so I can talk to them about how I can create these amazing girl trip experiences for them, right? So I want to create excitement around that, how I'm going to do that, right? Let's have a party. That's why you have a launch, right? So what I say is, are you excited? Well, hell yeah, you're excited, but are they excited? And are you doing all that you can be doing to get your perspective client excited about your offer and about the services that you ultimately will do, right? So so these are some of the things that you want to consider in this excitement phase is why are you celebrating? Why are we celebrating? You want to tell them why we're celebrating, why you are the bomb.com, how you're going to celebrate. You want to let them know how they can participate in the party, what you're going to be doing for them in the party and why and what's in it for them, right? And then you also have a way to communicate, right? And so we're going to talk about all those right now. All right, so why are we celebrating, right? The purpose is to build excitement. You cannot build it. And again, they come, right? I've said that several times, right? So you got to build the excitement. So that means you've got to create an offer and you got to create an event, right? And so the event is your launch event, right? And you're like, well, okay, this all seems sort of uh, like I understand that, right? But many of you don't understand it because you're not doing it. Or you think that you've made a post on your social media page, and that's your launch. That's really not a launch, right? I'm talking about a party, right? An excitement, like you you are going to do a webinar, and you've sent out emails, and you've invited, you run ads to um, get people uh, to let them know that you're going to do a webinar, right? You've, you've targeted single women, right, uh, you know, between a particular age group who want to travel, right? Right. You found you've identified who your client is and you are getting this offer in front of them with the opportunity to celebrate. Right. So you do why we're celebrating is so that you build excitement around your business and around your stranger offer and ultimately the services that you're providing. All right. And my question to you is, is if you're not going to celebrate, well, who the hell is? If you're not celebrating the launch of your business in a monumental way, who else will? Your prospective clients don't know you, right? So maybe your friends and family will come to get together for you. But if you do a lackluster job in celebrating the launch of your business, you've created an offer, you've created an event, you've communicated, why would, why, who else is going to do it, right? You are the only person to do it. And frankly, that's your job, right? Your job, I will tell you, the more you get to know me is your job is to sell and market your business primarily. Everything else that you think is your job, building a website, blah, getting business cards, blah. Your job is to market your business, right? And how do you do that? You create events that center around your business and center around your expertise and let people know as many times and as often as you can how amazing your services are, what you can do for them, and why they should select you. All right? People need you. In a post-COVID environment, travel professionals are going to be needed thousand times more than they were needed post-COVID, right? The rules around, you know, particularly in the sort of pre, you know, because we're not fully over COVID, right? But in this sort of post-vaccination or 
I mean, I don't even know what to call the phase that we're in right now, but things are opening up and now, you know, we can wear, there's no mask required. So we don't know who's got COVID, but every country's got some sort of COVID test, right? An advocate is needed more than ever before COVID, right? So your prospective clients need you. And so you got to tell them why they need you. And if they don't know it, they're not going to know it. You got to tell them that, right? So then the next thing is, is how are we going to celebrate? There's so many ways that you can do that, but I'm going to give you just three, three ways that you can do it. You can host a live event, right? Um, I live in uh, Texas uh, currently and uh, pre COVID there was a travel agency in my community that hosted every month or every quarter a live event around a particular topic. They ran Facebook ads to invite their ideal client to that event, and they hosted that event. And will I tell you, were they able to sell people? I'm sure they were at that event, right? Because it was around topics that were of interest. I mean, I even wanted to go to one of the topics that was about river cruises. Right. So they identify what they're going to sell. They host a physical event. They run ads to get people into their event. And then they talk about their event. I mean, I didn't go, so I don't know what it was, but it was a good example of what you could do around launching. Right. You could also do a virtual event in a, in a COVID world. Virtual is more appropriate and more understandable to the average person than it was. 18 months ago, right? Everybody understands and knows what Zoom is, right? I wouldn't say that was the case a year ago, but for sure everybody understands with Zoom just because of the pure hell that you may have gone through with your children, right? So a virtual event is a viable thing to do, right? Building a Facebook group around your niche that allows you to attract your client in that community and you nurture inside of that community is another way to celebrate the launch of your business, okay? Okay. All right, these are just examples, right? And I've just given you just some quick examples. There's a whole myriad of different things that you can do around these different types of things, right? You can do a regular events, right? So it's not like you just launch one time and that's it. You could have launches every quarter around particular themes, right? You could do this regularly on a, on a, on a cycle so that you've always got some sort of celebratory excitement built around what it is that you do, Okay. All right. So question I ask again is what is it? What is, <laughs> this is always so hard for me to say, but what's in it for them? You always want to be able to answer that question for your prospective clients. What are they going to get out of it? Why should they participate? What's in it for them? Right. And so what you want to always make sure is whatever you're launching, whatever you're doing, that it's in alignment, in alignment with your goal. So if you're trying to get leads and build relationships, your offer needs to be a soft non-money offer, right? That will attract more people to it, right? And then you get the opportunity to demonstrate your expertise. People get to know, like, and trust you. You get to build that relationship. And then subsequently down the line, you can then offer something for money, right? So hopefully that makes sense. All right, you never want to forget what's in it for them. You always want to be speaking when you talk to your prospective clients, what they're going to be able to get out of it, what they can, why your services, your products, what they can benefit from. It's always a benefit conversation from the perspective of your clients. All right, and the, you know, here's the thing that is sometimes, oftentimes, sometimes, oftentimes forgotten, which is how will you communicate? And there's multiple ways that you can communicate, but I've just put three of the top three that I like to use, which are or are organic word of mouth, right? So if you like are doing a local community, right, you could. Uh, you could just pass out, like you could do like what I refer to as guerrilla marketing, create flyers, pass them out, right? You know, in a COVID world, that's probably not as practical as it used to be, right? But as you start to grow your community, as you start to grow your community and you start to grow your leads, organic people will tell people, will tell people, will tell people. That's one way. But I will tell you that's also very slow. That's also very passive, right? So when I'm launching something, I want to be aggressive. I want to be in your face, can't avoid me when it comes to me positioning myself in front of my ideal client. So I choose paid advertising because I can select 
who I want my offers to go in front of. I can micro select them and then I can put my offers in front of them and I pay to do that. And you can do that on any multiple of platforms. My platform of choice is Facebook, but you've got Google, you've got Pinterest, you've got Instagram, you've got all these different platforms that you can run paid advertising for. When it comes to paid ads, there are multiple types of paid ads that you can do. You can do traditional, but I will tell you in 2021, I don't think anybody should be doing paper advertising. It's expensive. It's not microscopically. <laughs> you can't microscopically identify your ideal client like you can with online advertising. So for me, I'm using all online advertising. I'm not doing radio ads. I'm not doing newspaper. I mean, I don't even think people read the newspaper anymore, but if they did, you know, I'm not doing any physical print advertising. It's all online digital advertising. Um, and that gives me the highest return on investment. And I'm able to get in front of my ideal client. Partnerships. You know, we're in the travel business. And so partnerships with our business are so easily formed because everybody obviously loves the idea of traveling, right? So if you are able to get in front or partner with influencers who have a large community of people that they are in front of, creating those kind of partnerships to help uh, spread the word of your event is another way to let people know about your event. But my choice, like I mentioned, is paid advertising. You know, organically, there are ways that you can organically drive traffic to your offers. But again, my preference would be paid advertising because I have the most control over it. All right, secret number three is 10X your promotion activity, right? You know, and I'm going to stop and just pause for a second because, you know, like I mentioned earlier, many of you may think, okay, well, I did a promotion. I let, I let you know, I did a post on my social media page. I did a couple of posts, right? I put it on my, my, my personal page and I let people know that I'm a travel agent. And by golly, that's all I need to do. And, and I will say, if you didn't get it on any response, that's because you didn't 10X it, right? You got to do 10 times more than that, right? Not only in activity and money, just all of it, right? Anything that you're thinking from a promotion activity, if you think it's too much, it's probably still not enough, right? You should be so sick of whatever you're doing by the time you're done with promotion, right? I mean, literally, that's how you know you've got a good promo going is, is that you are so sick of saying it, hearing it, typing it looking at it because that's how much times you've communicated it to your ideal client and that is in front of all of the people that you want it to be in front of. So let's talk about what that looks like. So the reality is, is oftentimes what happens when we're planning an event for our launches, we don't have a plan. We're trying to do everything ourselves. We don't outsource appropriately. We don't create a combination of outsource and do it yourself. And we're trying to do everything and that we don't do enough of it. So this is where I will just reiterate the importance of doing more than what you think it is. And if you don't know what that is, here's some things for you to consider is, so when I say outsource versus do it yourself, you know, when I first started in my business, right, I was a cheapskate. I was cheap, right? And it wasn't because, you know, it's not like I'm rich and I had all this money in the world and, you know, I had hundreds of thousands of dollars to invest in advertising. I didn't, but I am smart. And I was like, I could do it myself. I don't need to hire somebody. I'm going to save that money. I don't know what for, but it was like, I'm going to save that money. I can do it myself. I can do my own graphics. I can do my own website. I can do my own this. I can do my own that, right? And so what I ended up doing is spending hours in areas of my business that were important but weren't my superpower and avoided the one thing I should have been doing, which is building more relationships. Right. So if you find yourself spending hours on building a website and you're not spending hours in front of your ideal client, you're wasting your time. Right. And that's what I did. I, I, I'm not going to lie. I wasted hours, days, months, years of time I can never get back. Right. Away from my family, my kids, uh, my husband, my life on things that were not my superpower to try and save a buck. And they didn't. And it has kept me from the thing I should have been focused on. So when it comes to outsourcing, right, 
you may think, oh, well, you know, it's $500 to do a website. But if you pick the right person, that website will be so awesome. You could have never done it, even if you tried 100, you know, hours worth of work, right? So pick those things that are going to give you the best bang for your buck, right? And get you in front of more people, right? So, you know, I spent hours on building sales pages. I spent hours building uh, websites, right? Instead of, you know, if I had to spend hours and I had to trade hours and there's work I had to do and I had to learn, it would have it was a better usage of my time to learn how to do Facebook ads because those ads get me in front of my ideal client than a website does, right? I need people to see my website for the website to be a benefit, but by virtue of just creating a website and nobody sees it is not a benefit to me. So hopefully that makes sense, right? So you not you need to pick and choose what you outsource. You need to identify what your budget is, and then you need to obviously pick those things, right? You should focus on those things where you are talking to your ideal client, right? So if it means like doing a training where you get to come in front of your ideal client, focus on that. Like that's something you should outsource. You are the best person to talk about the products and services that you offer, right? Don't outsource that, right? You know, developing the plan, determining your goals, right? The, you know, learning what you need to learn about your uh, very specific niche, right? That's stuff that you need to learn about, right? That's what you do yourself. Now, a combination of those things would be you picking outsource and do it yourself things. But again, this party and this event that you're having, don't try and do it all yourself. Make sure that you have a good combination of things that you can get, like images are so easy to outsource. Fiverr, you can outsource at Fiverr, Upwork, all of these sort of graphical places where you can get really good graphics, and you have to spend not one time on Canva. Even though it's fun, I'm not a graphic artist, right? They can deliver a logo, banners for me in like, you know, less than 24 hours, which would have taken me two or three days to be able to get something out that's going to look at least halfway professional, right? So really what you want to do is sit down, understand what it is, the type of event that you have, what you're good at, what you're not good at, figure out who you need, put that plan in place and get it together. All right. That's going to be the first test. Plan the party, make sure you've got the right people doing the work in the party um, and then procuring those people. And then really the very next thing that you're going to be doing is you're going to be promoting, right? It's, it's promote season, right? So you have an event. Let's say you're going to have an event in four weeks. You're about to launch your travel business and in four weeks. You're, maybe you're going to do a contest. Maybe you're going to do a webinar. Whatever that, may, that event's going to be, right? You're going to be promoting the hell out of it. And I mean literally so much that you're sick of the word promote, right? You're going to be so sick of whatever the title of your event is. You will have written it, said it, and done it so many times. That's how you know it's enough, right? So here's some of the things that you want to consider when promoting is you definitely want to understand the method by which you're going to be promoting. Are you going to be doing it organically? Are you going to be doing paid traffic? Are you going to get a partnership? You're going to need to get all that stuff set up right? So if it's paid traffic, there's some things that you need to do for paid traffic. If you're going to do it organically, how are you going to get the word out in front of your ideal client? Partnerships, you got to get, you know, get those partnerships established. Make sure you've got the right of partners that you're doing. But here's the thing that I would say, um, and this is this avoid, uh, avoiding burnout is, you know, I said you need to do it until you're sick of it. And the reality is, is you do need to do it until you're sick of it. But if you've got the right team in place, you've got the right resources, it shouldn't be that you're doing everything, right? Just for this webinar alone, the amount of communication and the amount of work our team got to get all of you all on board and the subsequent work that we'll do afterwards, that's a monumental, this is an event for us, right? You coming to this uh, webinar wasn't by chance, right? We did a lot of communication to get you here, right? We'll do a lot of communication on the back end of it, right? And that's the same thing that you'll need to do, right? So to avoid burnout is to make sure that you've got some help helping you with not only the pre-event, during event, and then post-event. And then engagement. What you want to do is, again, you want to think about the fact that you don't just talk about this event one time. You want to talk about it regularly. You want to get the people that you're talking to about it engaged so that they remember to attend, right? And even if they forget to attend, you want to have a way to uh, recover those people as well. 
Another great idea when it comes to promotion is create sort of this VIP status, right? You can create VIP sign-up lists, right? You know, special treatment for VIPers. Maybe these are a collection of people that sign up early for your event, whatever. But if you create this sort of VIP treatment of people, early adopters, early signers, right? People love to be uh, sort of in the VIP status. And then remember that no matter what you're doing, even if you're doing selling, your goal is to sell to a group of people that you already know. You still want to be building relationships, right? Because every person that you promote to may not buy now, but they may buy in the future. So you want to make sure you're capturing their contact information, that you're continuing the relationship post-event, right? You want to make sure that you're doing the right thing thing it to the right person, meaning you don't want to sell to people who are new to you unless you've already developed that relationship. So it's just keeping all of those sort of moving thing, uh, moving parts in place, right? I'm going to say the obvious, but show up to your event on time, right? Don't, don't renege on your events. If you host them, have them show up on time, have a great time, and then let all the people who missed it be like super jelly because you, you know, you communicated all the greatness that happened during the event and post the event as well. All right. I'm going to pause and ask if you guys have any questions about just, you know, these three secrets that we've talked about. We've shared a lot of information in this short period of time. Hopefully, you guys have been taking notes. Um, if you missed it, I will. And if you are registered, obviously, I am going to give you this in the replay. But before I continue, you guys have any questions on about any of the secrets that we've talked about thus far? If you do, put them in chat. All right. So, you know, this is this is what I have gathered over the last, you know, 15, 20 years in launching products specifically in the travel space over the last three years um, in the travel space. But what I will tell you, and this is a fact, successful product launches do not happen by accident. They happen on purpose. That means if you want well-attended events, you want well-attended participation in your launches, in your business launch, in your service launches, in your product launches, it happens on purpose. And the only way that that happens on purpose is that you know what you're doing and you follow the steps. So here's the thing. If you love this webinar and, you know, you don't want to figure out, this is a lot of information, right? And obviously, there's a lot of steps that go in every one of these phases and secrets that we talked about. Don't have enough time to go in every single step. And that's exactly what I created our program for to do, which is our Travel Passions to Profit program. So listen, here's what I'm going to offer you guys tonight. I'm not going to sell you anything. I'm not going to have you try and sign up for Travel Passions to Profit because I don't know if you're a good fit. You don't know if I'm a good fit. But what I will extend to you guys tonight is the opportunity to at least have a conversation with myself, right, um, or one of our team members. And here's what we're going to cover inside of the program. So if it is a good fit, we talk to you and we determine it is a good fit. What we're going to offer you is two major things. We're going to teach you how to launch your travel business the right way, how to set it up, how to launch, and then also how to attract, relate, and convert your ideal client, right? And so we do that through two core curriculums that we offer, our business foundations and our client attraction system. You'll get lifetime access to that if you do decide to enroll in the program. What you'll also get is... Uh, group live coaching from my team, so inclusive of myself and other team members that are on our team to help make sure that you've got the support that you need. And then you also will get our inner circle group. So that is where our clients come together. They ask questions. They're able to get feedback on their homework assignments. They're able to really have a community of people who are in the position that you are, which is launching, operating, and trying to get as many new leads and sales as they possibly can. So what I really, uh, let me not forget this last bonus, which is our Facebook ads. So we are also teaching how to run Facebook ads. I'm not going to teach you everything that Facebook has to offer because you don't need it all. You need one specific type of ad type that I'm going to teach you how to do. We're going to microscopically identify who your ideal client is, and we're going to get your offers in front of them. All right, so who is this program for? What we'll discuss on this call is it's for people who are ready to launch a travel business, either launch or relaunch. If you don't want to figure out things on your own, you know that you need an offer, but you don't know how to create a stranger offer. You don't know how to create 
you know, maybe you know how to create packages, but you don't know how to promote the packages. You don't know how to market the packages, whatever that may be, and you're ready to move forward, then I'm going to invite you to book a call. If you know that you want to get clients, you're tired of dealing with just your friends and family, or you know that you want to get strangers and you don't know how to do that, then I'm going to invite you to have a call with me. If you're ready to take action and you want expertise to help you with that so you're not muddling around and trying to figure it out on your own, I'm going to invite you to call. Who this is not for because, you know, let's not waste each other's time. If you do not have a strong vision for your travel business, you are just trying to do this as a side hustle. I respect your hustle, but this is not a side hustle thing for our team. It's not going to be, you're not going to want to be in the program because this is for people who are serious about operating a travel business. They want this to be, a, you know, a business that potentially is a legacy that they leave for their family, right? They don't want it done for them. They want to do it themselves, right? Or learn how to do it themselves. Then this is for you. So how do you do that? How do you book a call? But before you book a call, let me just tell you what the program will include. It will include lifetime access to the core curriculums we talked about. You'll get 16 weeks access to our group support. You get daily live Q&A uh, clinics with our team. And then you'll also, for a limited time, for those people that we do decide to move forward, you'll be able to get four private 30-minute coaching sessions. All right. So all you've got to do tonight is if you think that this is something that would be interest of you and you'd like to schedule some time with me to talk through this with me about your business, all you need to do is schedule a strategy call. And how you do that is you go to travelbossgroup.com forward slash forward slash schedule, and you will be able to schedule a 30-minute session with me. I will not be selling you the program on this call. What we are going to be doing on this call is having an honest conversation about the vision for your travel business, what's been working for you, what's not been. And what we're trying to figure out is, one, can I help you? And two, if this program would be a good fit. And same thing for you. You're going to be trying to figure out the same thing. And if we do decide that it is a good fit, then we'll proceed from there. All right. I'm going to open it up for a couple of questions. And then after that, I'm going to let you guys go. All right, so I got a lot of thank yous, and you are absolutely welcome. So, uh, so your do uh, Amanda, all you need to do is go to that link right there, and you can schedule a call. Um, and then you and I and your daughter will have a, a great conversation. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Great information. I'm glad that you enjoyed it. We do these webinars about once a quarter. So... You will see us again for a couple of months, uh, we'll, and we'll pick another great topic for us to talk about. But I'm glad that you guys enjoyed it. And if you do have any questions, come inside of the Travel Boss group. Post your question there, um, and uh, either myself or one of our client support specialists will respond to you. Um, and uh, we've got some people who are saying that they're ready, and I look forward to talking to you. We will be closing down. Uh, the calls by the end of the week. So you definitely want to get scheduled on my calendar uh, before the end of the week because I will be closing them out by the end of the week. All right. So love to hear. I uh, love to see so many people who are ready. Look forward to talking to you on a upcoming strategy call. All right. So somebody says, um, I don't know if this is for me now. Can I come back another time? Absolutely. So I will open up my calendar um, in the future. You'll just want to look out for that. Um, Cynthia, I don't know um, if uh, Jaylen or um, Leo is your client success uh, client support specialist, but I know Jaylen is on the call, so I'll have her reach out and let you know if it, it will be her or Leo who will talk to you, and then you can uh, determine when would be a good time for you to book a call. All right. Well, ladies, I don't know if any gents are on, but if there are any gents that are on or catch us in the replay, it was a pleasure coming to you live tonight. Again, if you have any questions, come inside the group. Let me know. Um, and I look forward to the Facebook group or page. I prefer you to be in the Facebook group. Um, and all you need to do, if you haven't joined the group, is go to travelbossgroup.com forward slash join, and you will get the opportunity to join our Facebook group. Uh, you can schedule through Leo, uh, Ty. So if you've already talked to Leo, just uh, reach back out to Leo, and he can get you scheduled. So, yep, he'll, he has access to my calendar, and he'll be able to get you scheduled. Perfect. All right. So, ladies and gents, it was great. Again, it was great time talking with you all, and I will talk to you guys soon. Have a great evening.